Journeys is sponsored by the Horsemen's Benevolent and Protective Association of Ontario, which represents thoroughbred owners and trainers and their hardworking employees at Woodbine and Fort Erie racetracks. The HPPA represents horse people's interests in all issues pertaining to thoroughbred racing. The HPPA's goal is for the betterment of racing at all levels, from medical and pension plans to negotiating with government and racetrack operators. Your HBPA is at the forefront of all issues important to members. Please visit the HBPA at hbpa.on.ca or on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you, HBPA Ontario. Away Together is all about enhancing the guest experience from the hotel to exploring everything the destination has to offer. Away Together brings the culture and the history of a location alive to the traveler who is seeking to immerse themselves in a truly authentic local experience while on vacation. The next race day at the Garson Savannah will be the 30th of March. Bring your family and enjoy a day of races. Journey. Hello, guys. Hi. Good Everyone. evening. Welcome wow. back. Welcome back to another day of journeys. Yep. How's everybody I'm, doing? I'm hearing you guys are a little chilly up there. You start already. You started yeah, with that yeah, already, yeah. eh? Yes, I did, sir. Yes, I did. You know, you know what? Go ahead. You're, you're in Kentucky now. You're in Barbados now. I'm going to worry about you. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, I'm, you can start on him because you the you had a little more worse weather than me. So... <laughs> I'm I'm getting more wind now here than than snow and cold. It's a little cold, but not you know cold cold. I'm getting the sunshine and wind, but windy. Yeah, well, but, we had like uh, mini blizzards all over the place here today. People were like driving with their uh, hazard lights on down the highway because the the snow was blinding and and it was very windy. So the snow is blowing up and it's. It's going to go down to minus 12 or something tonight. And the crazy thing is that uh, Friday, day after tomorrow, we're going to get a whole pile of snow. And, wow. you know, by my front door, I have my little bottle of my suntan lotion that I put on the other day, last week, when I was sitting out on my porch. <laughs> and now the, uh, the suntan lotion is covered up by my tooth. <laughs> that's a good way of put, that's a good way of putting it though but you know for all my years living in canada i tell you the weather can be so nice but as soon as we hear oh the racetrack is opening back mm. i says here we go here the cold weather's yeah. coming now and it happens yeah. every year because everybody was smiling oh the weather's so nice the weather's so nice as yeah. soon as that racetrack opens back you know well, yeah. hey, I know. Yeah. I feel there bad goes, for the... There goes the theory for gro global warming. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, and I, I've been watching the worksheet every every day for Woodbine, and, you know, there's quite a few rate horses working, working. I see a horse was oh. up, worked up to a, a half mile the other day. I saw, wow. like, one, one stable was doing all half miles already. I was like, holy mackerel. Yeah, wow. so you know, uh, I forget who it was, but yeah, one stable was doing half miles. I see Justin is on tonight, he's already had 45 comments. Hello, Justin and Jay Bird <laughs> and Edwin Week. Hello, everybody. Yeah, yeah wow. so you know, it's, 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 it's just now that this cold weather coming in, and I was thinking it's gonna set those guys back a little bit now, you know, that's the only thing, you know, but. And the condition book is also everybody's probably got the races marked up and you know pointing towards where they're gonna go and trying to work towards it, which yeah. is you know you know it's good for them. But at the same time, Mother Nature kind of says, "Hey, hold your horses. I'm gonna throw a little bit of this at you and set you back a little bit." You know, always yeah. things that happen. So, and then you know, like I was watching, it's so interesting. The, the, the racing is starting to really heat up all around North America too. I was looking at 
because on my program I can see the nomination sheets for you know various racetracks. And between the twenty second of March and I say take the the thirtieth of March, there are at least about fifty two stakes. Wow, yeah. fifty two. And and then when you look, it's not like there's between this because it's fifty two stakes that are like ten racetracks. Is this like fairgrounds, golf stream, you know, Aqueduct? Just about five or six straight tracks that has these these races. You know what I mean? Fairgrounds got like ten or thirteen. Golf stream has got you know what I mean. In Sam Houston, King well Kingland is coming around the corner for opening, but that's April fifth, so that's only two races. Laura, Oakland Park, you know, Santa Anita, you know, it's a Tampa, you know, and then Turfways. I mean, the twenty third is a ton of you know. If you're really gambling, looking at stake races, you're you gotta have two two different TVs or something for the twenty third, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean. Turfways during the day, and then fairgrounds get going later. Of course, yeah. people who know me know that I have a, a pet peeve with fairgrounds. Uh, mm. The Louisiana Derby is on Saturday, and it's the 12th race. It goes off at 6.42 Eastern time. And uh, just like when they ran the Rhythm Star Stakes, I mean, it, they run it in the dark. Yeah. They run their big races in the dark. I don't understand that, you know? So they race yeah. all day long. Like, I don't know. I'm just... Maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but it's like, you know, why? Why are we running these big races in the dark? They don't even have lights there. Uh, wow. You know, if you, you look, you know, maybe, I don't know, I'm just talking, uh, speaking out loud, you know, trying to hold the crowd there for the bed and stuff like that. I know the Gold Cup did that last year, and they changed it up this year, and it seemed to be still was still okay, mm. you know? so. Yeah, no, no, I know. It's just, you know, I'd rather see the horses not run in the dark. It's a lot easier to see where your horse is running if they're not you know <laughs> in darkness yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah no there's lots your track your, your track there turfway this saturday uh i guess it's the only day they race during the, during the, the day yeah. yeah and i didn't but, even know because when i entered that fill in and i pick up the overnight i'm saying whoa she's running at 113 oh she's running yeah. in the daytime you know so yeah. it's interesting to see you know and the, the, they're putting up a lot of tents here and everything, so they're really it's getting on ready TV. here. Yeah, yeah, you're on, uh, you're on like one of these NBC Peacock channels or something, so they're showing yeah. a couple of yeah. the races there, anyways. Yeah. But yeah, uh, lots of had a big craw, craw, had a big crawfish thing here yesterday. Whoa. You know, were you involved? Um, no, 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 I wasn't right. involved. I just want to, you know, stay on what I'm eating right now. Try to keep on a strict day and stuff like that. Oh, okay. But it's just interesting to see how they do the crawfish thing. Everything goes out on the table and everybody just goes in there and take up what yeah. they want to eat and stuff like that. Oh. You know, so it's, it's something different, right? That you, you get to see. So it's really interesting to see that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, guys, yeah. So, derby's, well, derby's around the corner. We've got a lot of derby preps coming up. So we got a lot of things to talk about. So if you guys want to get rolling, let's get rolling. And you want to show one of those videos first for that that Louisiana race last time first, Jen, or what you want to do so we can... I, do you think we should bring in our, our man, Kirk? Of I course. Do. Of yeah, course. Bring it, oh, Hammer. Yeah, yeah, Kirk, bring bring yeah. He's our guest host, man. He's our guest host. Hello, Kirk. Hello. Going man, on, hey, go, could you go take that shirt off and come back, man? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Who's, who's leading the league? Our, our, our Arsenal. You know, the Barbadian guys are big in soccer, Jen. You know, we're, we're, it, it can get very argumental with soccer and sports <laughs> and stuff like that. So that's why I'm throwing a, a punch at him very early. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you don't like that. No, there's, there's Sean now with South, South Sides. You know, <laughs> your chest I, is that I, big, Sean. Your chest is that big to put that shirt up. And you, 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 they put your chest back down, man. But that's why. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm take care. You don't hurt chest. yourself, Sean. Exactly. Before you don't hurt yourself, Sean. Let, you, you, you just release your breath there. You're, you're holding your breath and you're up like that. Yeah, so, I always yeah. choked, man. I always <laughs> yeah. choked. Exactly. So settle down up there. Settle down up there. Am <laughs> I the only one wearing a journey shirt? Yeah, because listen. Tina and, and, and Paul from South Sides in Fort Erie, they live right next door to my mom. So I went, Paul told me he had a t-shirt for me. So I said I will wear it and give him some plugs. South Sides okay. is now, it's come up to springtime. So I'm going to help my Fort Erie people out there. 
Break Paul and Tina. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Jen. I'm sure you know South Sides very well. I know you've been there many times. <laughs> settle down, down. Settle down. <laughs> settle, settle down, Sean. He's, he's on a hype here tonight. Yeah. yeah. So now we've got Kurt. Kurt, how are you doing, Kurt? I, first of all, I'm congratulations. Good. Congratulations on last week's win. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Let Tell me take this that. time to shout out Huntsman. Mm. And the horse's name is Life is Great. We had a we had a fantastic race. Well, hey, well, why why don't we just we got the video that we can show that race yeah, so we can get rolling off of that right yeah, away and show yeah, and let, let, Sean, let, Sean, let Sean let Kurt push his chest up a little bit and still a Sean pushing his chest up. <laughs> 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 Hammer, uh, Hammer, you got it set up there yet, Hammer, or we're a little too quick for you? Oh, he's I'm sure he's don't, ready to go. Don't want yeah. to put you on the spot there too early, buddy. Somebody said Arsenal is trash. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm wow, you, look. You, those are fighting what, words now. There you go. You started those are fighting something words. Curse. But his, his name is Ed Toes. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Man. I don't I know what that. that is. I don't know what that is. Ed Sucks Toes. <laughs> Ed, you, Ed, you nah, suck yeah. okay. toes. Okay, so Hammer Hammer's not ready for, for, for Kurt to get his little glory here yet. So when you're ready, Hammer, let, let us oh, know. Yeah, okay. You know me? So and we'll yeah. we'll click click back on that. And what yeah. other races we got there that we can we can show early too, Jane, so we can get rolling off in the car. I know we want to speak a well, lot. Well, I assume these, that he's good. not ready to show that yet, so he's not ready to show the other videos yet. So I, I okay. think he needs to but hello, All Ned right. Hayes. Another win for Marty Drexler at Gulfstream today. And Ned was the groom, man. Ned looked after that horse. He showed me the picture. He got it done by nose. Well, you know what? <laughs> a win is a that win. There's nothing me. like one. It yeah. doesn't surprise me that Mr. Narcissistic won by a nose because that horse has not won a race in, I don't know, a couple of years at least. And he wow. always runs second or third and never wins. And I was talking wow. to Marty on the course a couple of weeks ago. And I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that he actually won today. He won a photo. So, <laughs> um, yeah, Marty's doing all the right things now. Okay, what do we got here from uh, Hammer? I have Risen Star video. Okay, well we can right. switch to uh, we can switch. Oh, hasn't won since 2021. Said Ned Hayes. So three years. Yeah. Oh, so wow. only Marty could get Mr. Narcissistic to come out on the winning end of a photo, but and it's an Ontario bred horse, so. Um, good for him, anyways. Um, yeah, boy, Edu sucks toes. Says uh, Edu is Arsenal's sporting manager. I guess Kurt doesn't follow Arsenal. <laughs> I don't know, but okay. So switch gears back to the Derby. Uh, this Saturday is the um, Louisiana Derby from Fairgrounds, and um, the winner of the race before the Louisiana Derby, um, the Risen Star Stakes, the prep for the Louisiana Derby, he's not in the race, Sierra Leone. We know Kurt's uh, quite uh, fancies that horse for the Kentucky Derby. I but love there a are horse with horses, a heart. Yeah, there's some horses in the Louisiana Derby that were in the Risen Star Stakes. And I want to point out, um, I wanted to point out one that I like in particular. Now, the one thing about fairgrounds is not only, and I was telling the boys this before we came on the air, or just before we started here, Kurt, is that they they ran they ran these races in the dark sometimes at fairgrounds. I don't know why. So you'll notice that the Risen Star was in the dark. Not only that, but they had like you know torrential downpour. So the Risen mm. Star Stakes was running the slop. Sierra Leone won. We know he likes the slop, but why not? Let's take a look at some other horses that were in the Risen Star that are going to run this Saturday. And maybe they'll get a fast track. <coughs> but when I go to handicap a race and I see that a horse is, you know, one in the slop easily, one in the slop, and then didn't really do anything on fast tracks, I'm pitching that horse unless it's sloppy. Correct. Mm. Correct. So let's take a look at uh, the Risen Star Stakes. And I want to point out a horse uh, named Honor Marie, who what is number, number three in mm -hmm. the Risen Star Stakes. And, uh, this is his first start of the year. He he won the uh, Kentucky Jockey Club at Churchill Downs last November, so we know he likes Churchill Downs. This is his first start of uh, as a three-year-old for trainer Whitworth Beckman, a young guy. So let's uh, let's cue that race up, uh, Hammer. And he's and he's running in. He's going to run in the Louisiana Derby, Jen. Yes, yes. He's number seven in the Louisiana Derby, so he's number three okay. in the Rhythm Star Stakes here. 
And okay. they're Boring. off in the RZA Star Stakes. And there's Cardinal mm -hmm. with for the inside Awesome Runa. Hall of Fame is up close. And here's Trek Phantom going for an early bid as they make their way toward the first turn. It's Trek Phantom. So Trek Phantom is just it's faster than Cardinal. Line. Hall of Fame with resilience and B dancing the rear. in the gold cap. Orange sleeves. with blue cap, Saving right? Round is awesome Ruta. With mm -hmm. on the outside chasing freedom, and they have seven furlongs to run. And then toward the inside, Saving Round is Real Men Violin as they go to the back of this sloppy track. And Sierra Leone settles in in the Navy Silks. Three clear from Moonlight, who's next. Well, four clear from toward the inside. Honor Marie and Tizzy Indy has dropped back to trail the dozen. The first two of nine furlongs in 24.32 seconds with Joel Rosario. It's Trek Phantom who made the top. So Trek Phantom leads them to a half mile from home in the Risen Star Stakes. From right there toward the inside, Cardinal with resilience up close. And then comes in between horses, Hall of Fame, Real Men Violin, and on the far outside, B Dancer. B Dancer wide both turns. Awesome Bruto with Chasing Freedom, Sierra Leone. Moonlight, Honor Marie. The trailer remains, Tinsy Indy. Half mile for Track Phantom. 49.67 seconds as they round the far turn. It's Trek Phantom. Trek Phantom continues to hold on to this advantage as Hall of Fame starts a bit outside of resilience. Toward the outside is Cardinal Awesome Ruta. Chasing Freedom is four wide. B Dancer, Real Men, Violin toward the inside as they turn for home after three quarters in one minute 14.74 seconds. Track Phantom charging on the outside is resilience. Hall of Fame flattens out. Chasing Freedom trying to keep a straight path and Sierra Leone charging hard on the outside. It's Track Phantom Resilience chasing freedom in tight quarters between horses. Sierra Leone on the outside for Tyler Gaffleone. Sierra Leone. Sierra Ooh. Leone Track Trek Phantom down. Chasing freedom third and Resilience finished fourth in the Rizzo Star. So I like the way uh, you'll see Anna Marie right here in the oh, orange. Uh, good yeah, gallop. I really, you know what? He wasn't really going anywhere for the longest time. He's saving ground the rail. The guy, you know, they went 49 and a half. I'm not saying that's all that slow because the track was, you know, quite sloppy. But And the winner came from off the pace. But uh, the front runner, who's got a beautiful stride, that track phantom. And he's also in the Louisiana Derby. But I thought Honor Marie closed really well. And, uh, you know, the guy didn't beat him up, you know. He, he, you know, he just, I like the way he finished, so. I'm thinking that Honor Marie uh, deserves another shot in the Louisiana Derby. What do you think, Kurt? Well, he ran a he ran a hearty race, very hearty race. But yeah. it all depends on, you know, how he gathers himself and what he learns from this race. Basically, you really need a a race to get your heart going, to find your rhythm. So. Let's wish him all the best. Yeah, well, the They're thing changing about him, the rider too, right? Yeah, like, they, I don't even know who this B Curtis is. changing the rider. Yeah, yeah I, don't I don't know who B Curtis is. But, you know, he is a deep, deep closer. And, you know, it's not always that great at some of the in some of these prep races for the Derby, you know. You mm -hmm. see a lot of these horses just go wire to wire. You know, the Louisiana Derby is a race that the last Louisiana Derby winner uh, that won the Kentucky Derby was like grindstone in 1996. So, you know, I mean, you see Derby winners come from places usually other than Louisiana, but I, I want to see a better race out of Anna Marie. Plus, I also made a, a wager on him at 35 to 1 in the future. So, <laughs> oh, that was but, an outside you, bet, Jane. Let, let's yeah. go back to the race oh. when he ran at, at Churchill, though, Jan, you know, November on a on a good track. You know what I mean? They ran a mile and six thing at 144. And you, that's a great two race he won, right? Yeah. So, I mean, take away and then go back to the race before that. He ran in the slop again at Churchill and yeah. finished, finished second and uh, getting beat four lengths. So, two factors against him in those two races that he didn't win. The other two races on a, a firm track, he won. And he went from three quarters, seven eighths, a mile and 16 now to nine. So, I mean, you can't count this horse out if you want to look at it from those point of views. Hey, I just see uh, Addy, Yeah, Addy, Addy Joseph. Yeah. Addy Joseph just said that Ben Curtis is a top rider from England and won three today at Fairground. Wow. Well, he, uh, he's winning at 16% here. He's run, he's run, he rode 332 horses and win 36. Wow. So he, he's doing all right for himself down there. So, you know. 
So they gone to I mean the writer that was writing in before what what was his percentage? Oh he look, I'm not sure oh, he Rafael he Bejarano, there. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, so Patty says he's gonna wager on all the prep races this Saturday at Tote Investments Barbados. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck, Patty. Yeah, but I mean, hey, so the, the thing I'm looking back at the horse that Rosier right, because Rosier was right in that side and he's left side and he announced that he's finished with um in California, he's gonna ride at um at fairgrounds and then he's gonna go to Gulfstream and from Gulfstream he's gonna go to the kingdom, so he's not going back to California. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's probably a good idea. It might not be there when he goes when he wants to go back. Okay. Oh, let's not even Boy, talk about going. that. Yeah, and I know, I, mean, I know. I read about that too. That's yeah. so bad. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But so, yeah, Track Phantom is a very Track Phantom is a very nice horse. Steve Asmussen, uh, you know, the horse has been first, second, or third in all of his races. Beautiful stride. So he's the horse to run down for sure. And uh, it's a mile three sixteenth. I always forget that the Louisiana Derby is a mile. And three sixteen, so that's going to help my horse, Honor yeah. Marie. I think the longer, yeah, distance. the deep closer. So just yeah. jumping back there for that rider again, Jen. So his last hundred um, starts at Fairgrounds, he rode is showing you one here because you, I guess, oh, he's right at, at Oakland. He rides at Oakland. So Oakland, his last hundred, yeah, yeah 90, ninety-nine starts, sixteen wins. So he just went there for that one mount there. Then, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's that's what it was. Okay. I, he was right oh, I didn't yeah. even heard of that guy before. I didn't even know he yeah. came from England. Yeah. Well, then I like him. I like him already. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's the, uh, so that's the Louisiana Derby now, you know, and um, we got another three-year-old race. It's the uh, Jeff Ruby Stakes at uh, Leroy's track, uh, Turfway. Uh, at Turfway, um, yeah. But, of course, it's on the Tapita. So. Tapita, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's a big I money race. It's seven hundred thousand. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no superstars in the race at this time. But you know what's interesting is that you know the first thing you want to do is like it's on Tapita. What does that? What's that going to mean for the Derby? Well, well, last year the horse that won the Jack Ruby Jeff Ruby Stakes. I keep wanting to call it Jack Ruby. <laughs> Jeff Ruby Stakes. The horse that won it last year, two fills, got beat this far in the Derby last year. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. And uh, Rich Strike, the horse that was third in the Jeff Ruby two years ago, won the won Kentucky the, Derby. The, the Derby. Won the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, so yeah. go figure. Yeah. I was liking that that Airgate Road horse, but he's double entered. But you're saying that he's running at fairgrounds and not uh, at yeah. over here. Because he, he's yeah. a, a, deep, a deep closer, and I was kind of like, you know, there's some under yeah. – on the torpedo might be some speed because usually what they do on Tuesdays here, they dig up the track on Tuesdays and they didn't do it this Tuesday. Mm. So you know what they ah. get? Uh, yeah, yeah. I pay close attention to what's going on here because they dig this track up a lot more than Woodbine. And then really? they, and, yeah, they do. They do a lot more on it than Woodbine. I don't know for what reason, you know what I mean? But, but doesn't that you, slow it up? It, it does, but don't forget they're running that night, Sean. So, some that night it gets back close, so it right. tightens it back up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, on last weekend, we had a lot. Of, we, we I worked some uh, horse on last weekend. Um, it was Saturday, yeah, and it was we had frost the night before, and that track was fast Friday and Saturday off of that, that frost on the track, you wow. know. But they're paying a close attention with this big day coming up. I expect a fast track because again, they dig it up every Tuesday. Yeah, and this Tuesday they didn't do it, and I saw the roller out on it too the other day too. Wow. Okay. So, and I, that's it's why I kind of, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, with some speed, and I was liking this this a Pletcher's horse because he's a deep closer. I mean, he finished last time he finished second, coming from twelve from from twelve lengths out of it. Yeah, but you what know? do you think about that, dog? Do, don't you think about that's? What? I mean, if you're accustomed to digging the trap. To make it fair, you don't think it's going to be a, a speed bias track now, purposely done? Well, Sean, it's a it's a big day. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a well, big, I don't know it's what that means, day. though. I don't know what what does that mean. What, what, does that what mean? a big a big day? Hey. No, but I mean, why? What, what what's the difference with you? It's a big day. I mean, a lot of the people that are there wouldn't know, you know, Uncle yeah, or of course. Mr. Ed from Secretariat. What do they mm -hmm. care whether they ran a mile sixteenth and one forty four or one forty eight? Well, well, you hey. want you want your footing to be as firm as possible for the day everybody's gonna see see you perform. So yeah, 
I, I don't know, but I, I figure it then it then takes those horses that come from off the pace out of the race. Then it's going to be a speed by not, track. Not necessarily. Not really. Sometimes it helps them. Sometimes it helps those horses, Sean. You, you think so? The closers, yeah. Closers want speed to run at. They want and something to run at. That good ones might like get too far from them. <laughs> I just keep going. It's just the little things that you know you pay attention to that is interesting yeah, yeah, to, to yeah. some things. You know what I mean? And you want to pay attention to certain things. But I mean, handicappers and stuff like that too. I find on those type of tracks, even from a well bike back in the in the day, I I always found that those are things that you knew that certain coming off a break, the first few days of the track is going to be for speed for horses coming from off the pace, and then by weekend it tightens up and you know it's fast. Well, talking right. about that again, that's the same thing like when I first came down here and the first day I went out on the track, I'm like, oh, this track ain't making no noise like Woodbine. But then when I really thought about it and thinking it as days went on, I says, you know what? If you go on this track on Monday morning, Sunday morning, no, yeah, Monday morning because there's no training on Sundays. So Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. It's a different track. But when it comes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because you got the night racing and the track yeah. is going to work that long at night, it's yeah. a different kind of track. So you can get a fast track working in Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. You know what I mean? Because okay. it's not getting to work okay. as much. So it's, right. it's so much different. And you can hear it more on those days when there's no night racing. And the days they have the night racing the next day, you can, it, it sounds like it has a more cushion to it. That's the only thing I have with the, these, those type of tracks, though, because they seem to be easy doctor to, to, you know what I mean, to either be speed or to be slow or, you know, yeah. neutral. I don't know. And, and that would by now they put in the program what the track is getting uh, Gallup Master at and what races and everything. So for the handicappers to it, it help them down here, they don't know the fire to these things. Right, right. You know and, if that, I mean? and that's good on, on, on Woodbine's part to be doing that yeah. because I think it's very important to let people know when the track is Offer as much bias. information. Yeah. yeah. And bias then or, like, or fierce bias. That's my opinion. Yeah. And like at Woodbine, when it rains, you know, it seems to pack in at Woodbine, but here it don't because they, they work it more, more, more races than Woodbine. Wood, Woodbine would work at like, well, three races a, a day or something like that, Jen, and something, yeah. Here the seems to do it like every other race or every race, mm. you know? Really? So, yeah. It's funny because so. when they first brought in like uh, all weather tracks, you know, Woodbine brought in the poly track and, you know, they said, oh, you don't have to do anything with it. You just leave it. Well, you know, it, it yeah. needs as much grooming and, yes. and fiddling with and let's put some more oil on it or whatever. Yeah, more, more I mean, fiber. the poly track was really bad. The Tapita is like obviously the boss between yeah. Turfway and, and Woodbine and Presque Isle. Uh, you know, those are major league <laughs> racing surfaces. And, you know, my personal opinion, I think all the tracks should be that. But, mm. um you know, dirt's traditional and all that stuff. So I guess we have to keep dirt for a while. But I just think it's just a much safer uh, surface. And I and I I don't think that you know I don't think Woodbine has terribly strong biases. And I mean I don't know. I mean it'll be interesting to see how Turfway plays. I I haven't been following much of Turfway because it's nighttime and I'm usually asleep. But oh. um, it'd be interesting to see, um, you know, if it if it's goofy and speed favoring. That would be too bad. I understand that you want fast times and a fast track because everybody's watching and you want the big stakes races to all go in fast times. But you know, it's too bad if they if they make it to the point where horses can't like actually uh, rally. Yes, and there are a lot of uh, races at Gulfstream on the Tapita. And I love the Gulfstream Tapita is very nice. I mean, mm -hmm. not from not I don't know, I'm not there, but from a betting standpoint, a handicapper, I love betting on the Gulfstream Tapita. It's lovely. Mm. So are they are they doing that at, at Belmont too with all the, the renovations they're doing down there? Are they putting a, right. a tapita track there too? Um yeah. I thought that's what, yeah, they put in a, a tapita track. track. Oh, only a training track, but not to run on. I wonder if it's a real track, an actual track, or a training track now. I've kind of forgotten. Oh. One moment, please. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> well, <laughs> since we're talking about ourselves, um, Hammer just said that we have that um, race coming up. So let's, let's give Kurt his glory here before we go for deeper into our, our show. So, Hammer, yeah, throw, throw this amazing race up by an amazing job that Kurt has done for his horse up for us so we, everybody can see, please. 
and away yes. they go. And Thunder Lady has a number. Has gone straight to the number seven. So Thunder Lady okay. front from Storm Force. With the blue, I mean, the blue blinkers. Valley High between okay. horses. His life is great. Then on the outside of these is Edelweiss. Oh, backing out there a bit was life is great. Then one from yeah, I got jostled. Tail in yeah. star face and at the back of affairs is Everly. That's the way the race as they head up the hill. And Thunder Lady is quite comfortable in front now by a length. In second position is Storm Force coming with a run now is Edelweiss. Life is great has recovered a bit now is traveling nicely. Then comes Scarface. And then the others will have quite a bit of work to do. Starfish. That's the way they race with just about a furlong and a half to go. And in front, it is now on the outside. It looks like Storm Force has taken over. So it's Storm Force. One and on the outside is Edelweiss as they turn for home. Ooh, and it is Storm Force. Between horses here comes Life is Great. It is life is great. Even further on the outside, here comes Scarface. And down the stretch they come. And it is life is great. Life is great is going to win this one easily in the end. Life is great wins it. In second position, running very well with Scarface. Then along the rails with Storm Force. And then a long way back to Everly in 107 and 3. In a moment, the unofficial place is for you. Before we give Kurt more of his glory, Kurt, we also want to mention this rider. He had just broke his maiden and win a double on that day too, didn't he? I don't think he broke his maiden, but he did win a double. And he okay. won before. Who is it? He had just gone from a seven pound clamor to a five pound clamor. Oh, so we actually, thought... yeah, we oh. actually went in the race two pounds heavier because of that claim. Well, who wrote him again? Um, Deshaun Gaskin. Oh, that Deshaun. He rides out west, man. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So this is not the kid that that the soap down with water thing that I thought that broke his maiden. Then on. No, no, no. Deshaun, no, Deshaun, that's... the guy okay. who, who he rides out west. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because there was a kid that that win his first race on on the weekend, and that's yes. his name. Um, his name is Zarel Ford. Okay, yes. so okay, so I thought that's what yeah. it was. My apolo my apologies. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was a good race. Um, well, technically third. on paper, I should have run third. Because I've had this horse for three starts, and we ran two seconds previously. And the two horses that beat me in the race were in this race as well. So on paper, I should have ran third. But um, I took, well, I tried to take seven pounds off. The jockey won the race previous to me, so then he be, was claiming five. Uh -huh. And I'd given him my go-ahead, and, you know, I stuck with him. He gave me his heart. And we were victorious. Mm. Yeah, and like Addy just said, you got a good right card. The kid is pretty aggressive too. He is aggressive. Very yes, very aggressive. I, 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 I like, I like that, that in him. A I nice like hand right to the finish. Yeah, very aggressive. He gave me yeah. his heart. Yeah, no, that's good. That's very, very well. Congratulations again on job well done. And keep Thank up your so good much, work. guys. You know Thank you. I mean? That's way, way to life go. is great, yes. Yeah, life is great. Yeah, life you're getting lots of congratulations there from Hanif Gooding. Um, there was earlier ones here too. After the scroll back a bit. So, Kurt uh, mentioning that, like, how long have you been in horse racing? Oh, I've been in horse racing close to twenty years. So, a uh, same same twenty years. Um, where did it start then? Well, it, the passion started with my dad. Okay, so your my dad, dad back in the day, back in the day, Sean was our apprentice. He rode for us. Born a bounty. We well, had horses like that. No. That was yeah. back in 1987. Oh, yeah, but at so that time, I was just the passion was just there to have a horse and have him running. And we dad dad was the luckiest person <laughs> buying a horse. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever been to look at a horse that he didn't buy that wasn't a winner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you need that in this game, buddy. You yeah, know what I mean? A hell of before, a lot of luck. Before that, a before hell that hell blessing in this game, you know, you know, you you you, you can fall flat on your face, and and you need that. And if you have it, take, take it and run it. Well, that's good to know. Twenty years in the game, that's wonderful. And you just well, this is twenty years with me playing a leading role. Mm. Because back then, as a kid, it I was remember just as a kid, Leroy, as a yeah. kid. I remember the little boy. <laughs> I was just having Edwin, fun. Edwin Weeks said, "Congratulations, Kurt." Peter Gooding <laughs> said, 
Whenever I'm in Barbados, I play that horse, Kurt. Obviously, I wasn't in Barbados anyway. Okay, congratulations, <laughs> Kurt. Uh, yeah, that's, that's... Edwin Weeks said border bounty? Yeah. That's the horse Sean rode. Sean won wow. with him. Sean, at Sean about him. Fastest yeah. finishing horse he ever yeah. rode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a pleasure riding him. He used to really run. Wow. Run, yeah. I won a race with him one time, man. And I, I, I remember that day, Kurt beat all the we beat all the, the big boys. Ram yeah. Sammy, Ricky Griffith, yeah. Yeah. And somebody and he was four, he five, was uh he was like fifteen to one at the at the top move, so yeah, so paid well. Happy that day. <laughs> We're getting all kinds of people asking about some other Kurt horses. When will Pepper Seed be returning? Oh, uh, Pepper Seed's been retired. Oh. The names, it's in the names. Hear the names. Uh, Life what about is good. Royal, Pepper Seed. What about Royal Flush. Royal Flush. That that was Royal okay. Flush. She's in loving memory now. We lost her. Um, she had a heat stroke. She oh. was in full to Jeanette. And we took her, we brought her in from the paddock one morning and she just laid down and she never got back up. Oh. We called in the vet. We never, we never, she never revived. Oh, dear. She I was fast. She used yeah. to run 106 on four. Yeah. Wow. So oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, um, Carlos Grant says, good evening. Carlos, I hear, has a new client uh, oh. this year. Carlos training for uh, Joey G Thoroughbreds, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. So um, he Congrats. can reply to that. But, um, yeah, let us, let us well, know what's going on, Carlos. Come on, don't keep no secrets. So now <laughs> when would uh, Life is Great run back again? Like three, four weeks or something like that? Well, I actually have him entered for the 30th. Okay. Um, he's rated 36. Okay. And, just a, and a, a 27 to 45 race came up. Mm -hmm. So he'll run on the 30th, provided we have races, because I'm, I'm understanding there's a very low entries for the 30th. Oh. So Serious? a big decision is being made as to if we're going to have races or not. I don't no. know that, that, that was the problem. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to back, jump back a little bit to your ratings there. So offer that win now. What were you rated before you win that race? I was rated thirty three. So now that was, race put you that race put you to thirty six. So you got about three points. Three points. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Interesting. I, I still don't. I still not a yeah. big fan of that rating thing because yeah. right. so you win a race, you got to jump up in the air. And it's like, well, you know. For but the thing to do. Um, the thing to do is to work with the ratings. For instance, r the race was a zero to 40 race. So rated 33, I was at the higher end of the weight threshold. Mm -hmm. The only horse ahead of me was the same favorite, a filly called Thunder Lady. She took 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. Our weight was 129 pounds. So when I claim, being I only had five, I took 124 pounds. So we won by we won by half length. Mm -hmm. So the whole characteristics of the race controls the rating. If I'd beat them by seven lengths, I probably would have get 12 points. I wouldn't have been able to enter this race there. Mm -hmm. Well, the 30th. I... Curse voice is gone. You no, no, can't hear Kurt. Can't hear. You can't hear Kurt. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Mid sentence, your volume went off. Your volume went off again. It's it's something. Um, well, he's fixing that. It's so funny, you know what I mean? That that's. I still don't. I'm not a big fan of that rating thing. I mean, if he wins by more lengths, his rating's gone skyrocket. Now he's got a. It's it's. Oh man, that's a killer for me though. I don't like it's it. An, it's 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 an old fashioned thing or something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's I know. The it's fellow Roy, about. Roy sent me a whole Roy. bunch of literature on it on how yeah. to understand yeah. the rating system and all that, but it was just a little bit too much for my little brain. But yeah, what, yeah. It, what it, I don't like about it, right, is that it takes so long to drop horses. Now, here I have a horse that he's how old now? Four <laughs> years old. He's now run five times. I I don't think in his first two years he's run twice. 
He's won three times mean. He started at 50 and now he's still 45, you know? They like to put you up very fast, but they take you down very slow. Ah. slow. Yeah. You know? If you yeah. ever- Are volume it, working yet, Kurt? No. no. Volume, uh, volume. No. Volume still there. No. So that's so, uh, no, it's 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 unbelievable. That's um, I I I don't. I'm not gonna strain my brain trying to figure it out. Um, well, Jamal, Walter Watson said, Jamal Watson said, the more it's explained to him, the more he's lost. Edwin Weeks agrees with him. <laughs> I, and, I I'm on the same page as you guys too. I'm on the same page because it's it's killing the horses, man. Because you just win like that, and now you gotta go all the way up there. Like God, man. They give yeah. the horse a second chance or something before it has to do that. Something has to, but again, I'm not going to get into that because I'm already going to say you're picking on the racing thing. That's the whole like that. show for Yeah, exactly, year. exactly. Um, <laughs> Gulfstream, let's, um, we got the the Texas um, j race on the weekend too and Mike DePaula has one inside of there. Oh. Um, oh. Um... Right, Dancer. Yeah, I didn't right, look right. at Gulfstream. Yeah, I guess that's an okay. early Queen's Plate uh, hopeful. But, yeah, he's running a five for a long sprint race on the grass, yeah. uh, Frag Daddy, Ontario this, Brad. But. Yeah, and, I mean, the, the, the Woodstock is coming up, too, that, and if he's using this as a prep for that race, too, right? You sure. Know, so, yeah, so. Long way so, from a mile and a quarter in uh, August, though. I know, I'm but, I mean, if, if you could come off of this race and come up to Woodbine an opening week, it still gives you a chance. I mean, it means this is on the turf. This race is on the turf. Yeah. This fight for long on the turf. But it still gives you that, you know, chance to come up an opening day and as a prep race for that, that too. Ooh. If you can look at it from these points well, of view, right? Ned Hayes said the plate winner already had a bullet breeze at Palm Meadows this morning, Leroy. Oh. I'm going to look that who's, up. Who, Kurt, who's, who's, the, who's, the, who's, who's the plate winner, Ned? Well, Since let's, you're, let's you're, look. I'm going to look at the right. workouts right now. But Kurt call, needs call to it. fix his volume. Yeah. So if you boys can help Kurt here, Kurt there, get his volume sorted Kurt. out. I, I think he needs to go out and come back in, Kurt. Go out and come back in and see. Still can't hear nothing. No. no. Go out and come back in. Yeah. Go out and come back in. Let's see here. The plate right. winner had a bullet workout at Palm Set, Meadows. Set, I'm just looking gonna, through. Giving us a oh, tip here. Cassie's horse, my boy Prince, 47. Oh. 47 oh. and 4 for the game. Yeah, but he's also running in a 5 for a long turf stake race to start his season at Keeneland. So, I don't know. Mm. I mean, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess it's possible that... Uh, my boy Prince is he's but obviously still, the early favorite for the plate, but early like, and like I, a quarter. Exactly. And like I said, mentioned last week, you know, we don't know what trio three year old is out there that turned the corner for this year yet. You know, you can't go jumping the gun yet and saying these things because there could be a diamond in the rough somewhere out there, Jen. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure. I mean, right now it's you know, right now, if someone had to ask me where the plate winner is coming from, I'm going to say it's a filly or it's a horse that has that we haven't even seen yet or mm -hmm. has run like once or less, though. Exactly. As so, Ned, uh, says, let the, Ned says, like you say, Leroy, let the horses talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want Kurt to come back on here because I want to show him a, a horse that I think maybe we could throw a couple of shekels on on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I want Kurt to come return. I, I'm not sure where he went. <laughs> on Saturday, what track are you talking about on Saturday now? Before you Tur turfway. At uh, turfway. All right, there you are. Saturday now. You're back. All yeah. right, you're back. You're I'm back. Sorry about that. That's no okay. That's okay. So. Okay. Um. What is Adi talking yeah. about? For the BC juvenile. Oh, he's just talking about a horse that's running against. Uh, frack dancer in that little oh. dinky steak at Gulfstream. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> We're starting to get off on tangents here and uh, oh. starting to lose the. I just want to see. I'm just checking in with Hammer. The other video I sent. Gonna so show. 
We're dealing yeah, with I'm going to show one more video. Uh, listen, almost every year an unknown wins the Kentucky Derby. That's what uh, Peter Gooding said. Mm -hmm. So that's true, yeah. So here's okay. a horse. Uh, yes, Ted Holder is oh, running. Uh, Ted Holder is hey, running. Hey, 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 on Sunday. Yeah. On Sunday. Yeah. On Sunday. That's good. Ninth race. What yeah. chances look like, Jen? Very, very, very hard race. Like, mm, I no. think he's probably looked at it and said, oh, my. Wow. <laughs> okay, but I want to, I want you know what one of my favorite things to do is? Is I love betting maiden races. Uh -huh. I love it. And I especially love betting two-year-old maiden races or three-year-old maiden Three races old. early in the spring, early in the winter. And I love to look up horses' workouts if they were in a two-year-old sale. Oh. I want to see how their stride is. I don't care if it took them a year to get to the races after. They went to the I'm smirking race. right now. I'm smirking yeah. right now, Dan. I'm smirking. Go ahead. I, you, I, I'm saying nothing. I'm keeping no, quiet on this one. But I want to <laughs> show you a horse that if, and you don't have to, I don't even think you have to be a person that watches workouts. But, you know, you can see some horses are big and lunky or, and they're doing their two-year-old and training work, and you're like, okay, well, that horse looks like he wants to go further. But let's take a look at this horse's workout from last May. And she's making her first career start on Saturday. I want you to tell me if this horse looks quick to you or not. Spin it, Hammer! Ah. Whoa, Sean's upside down. Wow. Sorry, something happened here, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fix the problem. <laughs> Look at that thing. Did you mm -hmm. see that, Sean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That thing almost was blowing the turns just going so fast. It, it yeah. has a very nice action. Ten on one. Just, wow. Just doing it on her own. So wow. she makes she makes her career day. Let's watch it again here. Look at that. Thanks, Hammer. Wow. Beautiful lead switch. Beautiful mm -hmm. pedigree by Uncle Mo. Her dam is a half sister to Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist. Wow. And she's lickety split. Now, it's a, wow. almost a year later. She's making her career debut on uh, Saturday at Turfway Park for trainer Josie Carroll. Her name is Sabatini, right, Leroy? Oh, yes. Leroy. <laughs> That's why he's saying nothing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh. Okay, so, I, what what I can share before you go any further, Jen, um, she worked one morning, not the last gate work. There was a gate, the, the first gate work, she worked five eights from the gate, if you can, if you pull it up there. What day was that? There are no five eights gate work. She should have a five eights gate work there. There should yeah. be one, in it? Yeah, there's a five eights gate work. Not what I'm looking at. I got March, okay. the last work was a half from the gate, and yeah, the but there's gate work was... It said a half February 10th. Okay. All right. She's got a gate work there, and she worked with two other horses, but a colt from Chris Davis, and he ran – I mean, she, she worked pretty decent, and he was working pretty damn decent himself. If the work before she worked with him, he told me that there's nothing staying with it with his horse in the morning, and she worked with him, and I, from what I see, she looked like she played with him that morning. He, wow. First time out, he broke his maiden pretty impressive. Really? I mean, pretty well, he's impressive. He worked with a horse that's already, she worked with a Ooh. horse and did well with him. And a horse, yeah. that horse came back to win first time out. Yes, on his very first start. Yeah. So he's now I've gone from betting like 20 to win to 50 to win. Okay. <laughs> so if that's that's if that's any input on it, I mean, you know, the race still has to run. Or like I always say, the race still has to run. Am I hearing right, though? Leroy, you just said that. What? Wow. I'm just. I didn't. I'm not talking about. I'm just talking about the horse that she worked with. I'm just giving Jen a little bit of insight on. I know. On I mean, I, I, you, you, you. Wow. That's well, no rule, though, Leroy. Well, look at that's it. that's no rule. I've I've had experiences where I worked a horse. I worked with a horse, blew him away. My jockey was like this. His was out and riding. My horse didn't last. 
Well, oh. again, and that's what I'm saying. The race, that's why I'm just saying the race still has to run. Yeah. I'm only giving gender input. I mean, you're looking yeah. at the horse working and everything, but I'm still just giving that little bit of input on what she did that morning and the work that that that's there. I'm not saying that she's going to go and blow it. Because if you look, there's a, some nice horses in the race. Well, the whole race is first-time starters except for one horse. And the one that's run is, doesn't look any good. And Sabatini, she cost 625000 wow. you know, for good reason. You know, now I see San Diego here says, with a split like that and then uh, taking close to a year to race makes the public yeah. skeptical about her. We wonder if she had an underlying issue that took her so yeah. long to get back to the track. I don't I have any problem with that. Oh. I mean, people, you know, especially like owners like this, you know, and a trainer like Josie Carroll. I mean, you can see the horse has got a bazillion workouts since December 30th. So whatever she needed to grow or maybe something, whatever, she had something to get over. But now all I know now is that she's had lots of work. She's worked in 48 from the gate twice from what I can see. And she's got a great pedigree. Now, yeah, the race is loaded. I'm sure there's, like, you know, there's a first-time starter of Wayne Catalano in there. It's working in 46 from the gate. Wow. So, um, you know, the race is loaded. But, you know, for, for me, and the two-hole is not too bad as long as she breaks, you know, because if she doesn't break, I'd be worried. But, um, you know, if I'm going to get six to one on a horse like that, I'm going to bet that horse. Will I get six to one? I don't know. I don't know, Jen. It's a horse that I'm going to bet on anyways, as long as she's not like three to two or something silly. I don't know. I mean, oh. it, it is a tough race, though, Leroy. There's no question. And that, that's what I'm saying. There's no question. And there's so many first-time starters. You just never mm -hmm. know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? So is the horse doing okay? Yes, the horse is doing okay. But the horse doing... Yeah. She's, she's good. She's good. Yeah. She's good. Yeah. I schooled her. I schooled her today. And yeah. she did it good, you know what I mean? I'm pretty good. And she put her to stand in the gate. She did pretty good there, too. So, you know. But, Ray, mm -hmm. don't forget, we still got to come out to the – and the one thing I'm happy about, that's really, really happy about, is the second race. So the crowd hasn't got there yet. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You know, the crowd hasn't got there yet, especially with these young horses. And there's some, they're putting up tents all on the front side in front of the stands and stuff like that, you know. So – for her to see these things and all that, which is good. And she's seen, they have one big tent up right now. And she saw that this morning. She took a look, but she was happy. You know, mm -hmm. she didn't act stupid. And I took her up, pony schooler this morning, took her past the, the same tent and she didn't respond, you know, stupid or nothing to it. So I'm doing, I'm crossing all my, my, my T's and dotting all my I's. Okay. You know, and you and need and some she good luck that's down a good, there. That's a good and I need some, some good luck down here too, right? You know yeah. what I mean? And, and again, you know she's doing everything that you asked her to do right and i need i need some luck at the same time and she draw the two hole and there's like 10 horses in the race so any of those other two first time starters can rattle in there and it can send that chain reaction through the gate you just yep, never yep. know you know what that's I mean? racing so, that's and racing that's, and and that's why i'm dotting all my i's and crossing all my t's you know what i mean now let me ask uh, you this you guys are trainers or horse people, whatever, like a first time starter like that, she wore blinkers, obviously, for that little workout, you know, and skedaddled around there. Is she wearing blinkers first time no. out? No, she okay, don't need them. She okay, need so them. now, what is your thinking, you guys, on, for, on first time starters? When I'm betting a race with all these first time starters, some people say to me, oh, I, I won't bet unless they have blinkers on. Mm -hmm. Well, I person, I, me, I'm going to just jump back a little bit. I went to Canada in 1990, and the fight girl I worked for was Gord Huntley. And yep. Gord Huntley was big on two-year-olds, and his thing was buying 20, 32-year-olds and getting rid of them. But his thing was first time out there, they put blinkers on, mm -hmm. you know, because his thing was he wanted them looking around, right? Yeah, and he wants to win first time out because he wants to sell them. His thing was getting rid of these horses. And he wants to show both of them out there so that people can come and say, okay, offer him the X amount of money to get these horses. And he did very was very successful doing that. You, you know what I mean? I can so, tell you the truth, boy. I can tell you the truth. You know, I was a Lloyd Severe guy. And early in my career, he got me a horse here in Barbets called, um, oh, Lord. Now I'm having a, a, a brain freeze. But the nice thing he had down here. And she... I ran her first time out without blinkers, and she was drawn 
like seven of seven and turn left at the start. This horse was the best horse. One blue flag is the wow. horse's name. One blue flag. One blue flag. Wow. wow. And her second start, I put Bunny the blinkers on. I remember that. She, she never, I never took them off in her career. You know what I mean? Because sometimes just not missing something like that could make you suck salt, man. Because she was the best horse in the race, but when she came out and all the horses inside her, she just she just went left and went the other direction, you know. She shied so away, I, she shied away I, from the field. Yeah, she shied away. But the next start, blinkers on. She broke on top and just kept going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's so, why I don't I just I, I I'd like to I like to try to with blinkers first. And, and the other thing, you know, what Jen was talking about as a horse person, and that's one thing I like with the European training young horses because mm -hmm. those horses go in tens and fifteens yeah. how many right. and they do so many different things with them and i yeah. learned something Correct. from that Correct. i learned something i remember learning something from that with when i was working with Reed baker and you know allowing me to do my job when i had yeah. two year olds i used to make if i make sure they go in at least threes and i let they don't they don't go there one sits in behind get the dirt in his face one sits inside and when they swing for home get them to come out open up a space and let them come into the space all those things i did with them mm -hmm. and i happened mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. a horse called tuendui a first time starter and i remember her when, yeah 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 and it so happened that by doing all of that it it did something good for me as a horseman showing that hey doing that it works because she draw the 12 hole first time out mm -hmm. And I love yeah. this horse. I loved her because she was training so good. And I actually give a couple of guys the better. And the boss said, you know, Leroy, right, man, that 12 hole. I said, boss, you know what? Don't worry about that 12 hole. This filly is good to go. She's going to make this 12 hole look pretty good. And she won mm -hmm. the race and paid $15. Wow. You know what I mean? And she took that 12 hole and came out and ran in front wow. of those, sitting okay. behind those horses and did her okay. thing and win the race. N meanwhile, she was a very talented horse, too. But teaching her the things in the morning, it paid mm -hmm. off in the afternoon. And that's why, you know, small trainers mm -hmm. at Woodbine mm -hmm. that don't have have um, more than one horse or all the horses to go with babies, they, they, they don't get a chance to work these horses and come in. You always got to go beg somebody for company, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or have to work their horses by themselves. Makes all the difference in the world. You know what I mean? So, and that's one thing I admire by the European training method. It's like let's let's mention the Breeders' Cup the other day when um O'Brien was training his horses when they showed you with them every one of them. Everybody in a line. In a line, uh -huh. and how the, the angle they had them in. You know what I mean? All those things. It makes a big difference from the morning. It does to make a big difference. Preparation is like I I, I knew the saying. You know I me. Mean? He who fails to prepare prepares to fail. So preparation in the morning. Can do mm -hmm. so much for you, especially with first time starters in the afternoon. Then right. again, you you got re, like people schooling horses. Reed Baker wasn't big on schooling first time starters. He says, "Leroy, take them over there first time out and let it be a shock to them." And mm -hmm. I say, eighty five percent of the time it worked. They go over mm -hmm. there, but the second time it was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So it's not always good. You know, you learn. People like to school. And some people don't like to school. So it works one way. It doesn't work the other. Yeah, and it can go vice versa. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So all those things are so interesting to see those things. And and again, like this morning with that filly, because you can, there's the same at Woodbine. You can take a horse in the paddock in the morning with a rider on. And uh -huh. here the paddock is right there. Everything is right there. You know, you got to go through the tunnel at Woodbine and go into the paddock and all that. And the horse gets to see that. And Reed never took a horse out there a school of horse first time out never when i worked with him for 11 years and how many of his horses went first time out you know so i don't i i believe in schooling i believe the thing to do is to expose the horse to it because it gives you as a trainer you know some every horse is individual so you get skittish horses you get horses that full of confidence but no athletic you know they're not athletic but full of confidence and each horse learns something from the other horse. So you put them in the certain positions to see what they're going to do, to know if, know if you're going to need certain equipment, what to do. I, I believe in schooling. Well, now now, now, let's talk about those first time stars. Let's talk about all the horses. Remember elated guy with Bob Tiller, Jen? Elated guy. Elated yeah. guy used to have to go over a race before. He used to school him on race day. Yeah. Wow. And he would go over a race before. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And yet this is something, yeah, this is something I had to do with him. <laughs> wow. And his, and, and that throw his whole career, and he was a nice horse. <laughs> and you know, I learned something from that or didn't doing it with one horse by Reed, because he was real jittery, and I took him over there, and you were able to go into um the the standard bread powder, the old standard bread powder, and wait. You go in school, mm -hmm. and then you go in and mm -hmm. wait till when the horses come over, and uh, mm -hmm. and it made a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Peter and Gooding this... said, "Hi, Leroy. I remember those days. You looked all dapper and professional. What became of, <laughs> what became of Mr. Baker? Well, we can answer that. Reed's in Florida at the moment. He's still a, a manager for um, a prominent owner. Buys horses for them, uh, mares and young horses, and." Uh, oversees the racing stable of Paul Braverman, who um, has horses with John Cheryl Lambeth up here. So Reed's still uh, involved. Active. 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 You got to get Reed on the show, man. Yeah, well, he'd be great, yeah. too, to give him a we call. Can get, yeah. uh, now, uh, yeah. Carrie just said it's off topic, but her husband Brian just walked by and noticed uh, Kurt's shirt and said, yay, because he's a huge Arsenal <laughs> fan. <laughs> Somebody's on your side, Kurt. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> but and, no, uh, all... Justin Snell always agrees about schooling. Let's school them all. Great trainers do it every day. I believe in schooling. Mm -hmm. Justin works uh, at the track, as you know, and uh, also, um, well, he sees <laughs> he sees it firsthand at Ajax because he's there checking the horses' identification when they come flying right. into the right. walking yeah. room. Well, that's another thing with with, with quarter horses, God. They gotta yeah. be so hyped up to go that, that quarter of a mile. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, it's a big yeah. difference there. But I mean, when you look at it from a horseman point of view, the, the so many different people have got the different ways of doing things. What works for me might not work for you, what worked for the other guy, you know. So it's so much. And and I was just mentioning to somebody when I first went to Palm Meadows, my first year to go to Palm Meadows, we were just about, I mean, a, a barn away from from Todd Pletcher. And it was amazing to see how these big barns operate. Uh -huh. they, the horses are going out in 10, 15s in a set. But uh -huh. what, what was so thing to me, all of his horses came out and stamped side by side outside the barn. Colts, Phillies, everybody together and stand uh -huh. side by side. And the, they didn't have the front polos on. They put the back, bring them up with the back polos. So the foreman and the assistant goes down and check the legs. And then somebody else coming behind them and put the front ones on. But it's that's not that. It's the way all these horses stood mm -hmm. that got me kind of like, wow, this is how the big operations operate, eh? Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. now we have we have some. You got to remember, they're full of resources too, huh? <laughs> they are full of resources. They, they ain't got you ain't got half the help they got. <laughs> well, that's true. That's <laughs> Sorry, true. Jen. We have we have some stables, you know, in North American tracks that try to do the same thing. Like I know there's. Probably there's stables at Woodbine that try to send out six, seven, eight, nine, ten at a time. Yeah. I don't know that it works like that necessarily at really busy race tracks. I, I don't even know if it's a good idea. What is your thoughts on that? Well, well, when you got, I mean, let's see, I'm, I'm just dealing with Woodman. You got a Mark Cassie that got a full barn of horses. You got a Jose Carr a full barn of horses. You got Kevin Attire with a full barn of horses. Let's say those three trainers. The track opens from what? Five o'clock, five thirty, five thirty, right? If I'm right, uh -huh. five thirty in the uh -huh. morning till ten thirty. You got to get them out. Yeah, you, you got to get them out. So you need, you know, so to send the them over that why. Yeah, okay. but then you, you know, Kevin with news the training track. Kevin, I, I love Kevin because we does he. Kevin doesn't send all of his horses to one track, and you know, every horse he's individually. Because I stood up and watched him given his orders to his riders before you know this set the horse go to the sign ring that horse go to the training track you know what i mean and he does individually different horses now cassie is a main track guy josie carl is a main track person you know they they're they, they big on the racetrack you know when reed had his um his big outfit he was big on the training track you know what I mean? He'll maybe just yeah. send one set to the main track or have to go to the gate or something like that. So everybody's <laughs> individually different. But when you have those big outfits, you got to get them out. You can't, you know, say, okay, yeah. take your time and this and that. The, 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 the track will close and then you're left. Right. The right. horse is not right. trained, train, right? So that's the answer to that that too. Here, here in Barbados, and you got a two-year-old training, you can't go until 9 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Sorry, eight o'clock. The track closes at nine. 
yeah. you can't go out until eight o'clock. So you have an hour, an hour window to work your tour year old. So, but that's that's on a safety measure for that reason. That's yes. the reason why they're doing yes. that in Barbados, right? Yes. I mean, yes, to prevent the, the the number of horses going fast and the number of horses on the track at that particular time. And then you got a small track, a narrow track for that. So, I mean, that's a safety safety yes. measure there. And I, and I mean, I agree with that for down there. But in North America, you got such big tracks, and you can afford the space. The track is so wide that you can, you know, what I mean get to take your two-year-olds out early i mean uh -huh. for safe uh -huh. if, if your two-year-olds are green or something i agree up at north america take them out late too till they get really used to the place and stuff like that but you, you your track is big enough in north america that you can go early and do your thing you know when you look at it from those things but in barbados it's a safety measure that they try to protect measure, yeah. yeah yeah so that's that's that's, that's very narrow right it's so yeah, small but that's that's it is all over the place you know that's the thing I, yeah that, you no, know exactly yeah. Um, so. Sean, so just a little off topic again. Someone, Henry Miller, wants to know if the Gold Rush drink uh, is still available at Bubba's, and <laughs> uh, or is it being exported to uh, you know Canada? You know what? That's our friend Bigger. And you remember Bigger? Oh, bigger, bigger, bigger. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> bigger, bigger, really love me. The beer didn't go rush, all right? It's yeah. smooth. It's smooth, yeah. he said. Yeah, he just, he really loves it. So, Bigger, I'm going to tell you this here now. I I, um, I I know it was selling at Bubba still. I know George told me you kept it on the menu, so I'm sure it's still I still got calling to find out how it's going. But we have plans to bottle this stuff. We have been oh. in talks to bottle it. And... Yes, bigger. I will send you a bottle to Belmont. Let me start getting these bottles. My man, I'll bigger. Take a case. Uh, uh, I'll you take want a, a case? case? Yeah. You take a case. Yeah. I gotta uh, give bigger a shout out though, because bigger, bigger's informed me that a lot of guys at Belmont watch the show. And tell me, Sean, you even got the, the guys from Mexico watching. So that's good. You hear that? Thanks yeah, getting some yeah. good coverage. Yeah, we get some good coverage. He told me when he went back to Belmont, he said he didn't realize the show was so popular. Everybody saw it, and he was uh, like a he he was a movie star or something. Yeah. So, so yeah, so he, he helped. He helped with the publicity of it too. Then. Yes, yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did man, and I, I, I'm really thankful for all the help these guys. Where you know, where Barbados are, they're, wherever they are, they, they, they sell the show to the people that's in their environment and we are very grateful and thankful for that man that's it yeah now we have people awesome. asking about mike and his health yes yes, yes. well i messaged him yes a few days ago and you know I me mean, he seems to be coming around very well and um well you know he's listening right of course he's listening you know mike <laughs> i suppose he hasn't he hasn't written something yet but um you yeah. know Mike is so well loved, man. Mike is, Mike is, is we, I, without a doubt, is the star of this show. And, you know, it, will, it won't be the same without him, not until he comes back. And we really looking forward to having him back, man, because we love this guy. Well, Mike, you're listening. So send us a little tweet and a thumbs up and let us know everything. Your, your healing process is going well. Yeah. And your fans are, you know, hoping Everybody. all the best for you also. also. Everywhere I go, man, everybody want to know about how Mike is and that sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's really, you would think that Mike, a Canadian, is a Barbadian, man. We are all these <laughs> Barbadians. I'm serious, man. I'm serious. Everybody want to know how Mike is and, you know what I mean, want to think he's back soon, you know? Now, I wonder, does he have horses in? Is someone, like, getting mm. his horses going at Woodbine or? I'm not sure. I tried calling Lisa the other day to, to, to find out about him, but I ended up kind of talking to him myself and she didn't respond. So I know usually she would help him out starting off. So I don't know what's going on there with that. So I can't answer that question. You know, I know there's, you know, a lot of people are going, it's starting to go in. I see a lot of 40 guys at Woodbine right now because um, I see a lot of 40 horses working at Woodbine too. I keep work, watching the worksheet every day now. So, you know, quite a few guys are working with horses. You know. Oh, uh, Edwin Leake saw Mike at the track a few days ago sitting in his truck. 
Oh. So he probably has well, heart I said hello to him, but we didn't talk because he was on the phone. Well, that's, that's, that's <laughs> well, that means he, that that's a that's a, a, a sign that he has horses in there. Then, so I mean, that's nice to know that he's got his horses in and got things starting things going. No, that's good. But you know, you know, again, as horse horsemen, we 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 go to we get sick, or we get an operation, and the doctor says rest. <laughs> that's a <laughs> but there's just this saying he doesn't need the truck so i mean he goes well, to the truck. yeah you know he he and offloading hay damien simpson says the uh, offloading hay well no, i wouldn't get out of my truck either it's minus 20 right now i mean come on uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. um, hammer's back from bubba's okay that's good <laughs> 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 Who said that? Mike said that? No, I said that. Oh, oh okay. That's, 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 no, but, yeah, Hammer had to leave for a minute. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, like, you know, me and Mike is picking our horses and then get him get things going. It's amazing we horse people though that you know, hey, we can't sit and wait because now at the beginning of the season we can't afford to miss time. We got to get our horses in, although you're under the weather. You still gotta find ways and means of getting getting your horses there and getting them going because you can't afford to miss time, you know. And that's the, the position Mike is in there right now too. Because like in our horse, you know, you if you don't try and get those owners horses in the barn, there's another trainer they're waiting for them to go to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ted, <laughs> Ted Holder has joined us and he says that Mike has been posting during the show here on Facebook. Oh. On Facebook. Yeah. And Carlos says he sees him every morning. So Mike's talking on Facebook. So. Okay. Because I know that. He needs to be joining us, the silly goose. But as far as I understood, he wasn't able to talk properly and stuff like that because of his health. He was able, he was texting still because when I got oh. hold of him, I was on, I was told I had to text him. And that's mm -hmm. what happened. And he texted me back. Yeah. But not talking and stuff like that. But you said he was on, somebody saw him on the phone. So I guess he's back talking now. Mm. Yeah, but he, you know, he isn't well, so you know, he got to come home when he's yeah. well. Yeah, but you, you know, know, hearing from him and knowing that he's doing okay, that's important for us, right, and for his fans. Yeah. So, yeah. So now, what do you so, think of this whole thing? I need a. Uh, well, you, you know, only hope that is, you know, that it blows over. But hey, this is the game right now. That's man. It's, well, we should just, uh, if anybody hasn't been paying attention. Um, you know, Northern California racing, uh, Golden Gate is closing down, but uh, there's a movement to try and get Northern California racing back going again. And the, you know, the owners, Stronix, uh, Stronic Racing, First Racing, have said that if uh, the California Racing Board allows allows uh, Northern California to get racing back going again, that they'll shut down Santa Anita. Wow. So uh, this is, yeah, this was going on today in a board, in a, in a hearing or some kind of date hearing and stuff like that uh, at the California Horse Racing Board today. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Santa Anita. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, you know, and I'm, I'm someone who likes to bet the races on weekends, but once the main tracks end in the east and Santa Anita comes on and there's a three-horse field, a four-horse field, I'm looking for something else. I mean, I just can't bet Santa Anita with those wow. small fields. Yeah, that's that's a that's but, a sad part about it. Yeah, but why is why where they're falling behind in, in that in, in the fields? Is there any reason why? Because that's the horse really fast. Yeah, but the horse population is down though, Sean. Yeah. But why is it more down out there than say the East Coast? Then that's what I'm trying to say. Good question. I'm not 100 percent sure about that. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, there must be a reason why the East is ruling the West. This does not wrap in. Are we in wrapping the East Coast and West Coast thing? Why <laughs> are the East Coast horses seem to be doing better than the West Coast horses? I mean, and San is a, is a real money track. You know what I mean? People with money. It is a money track. Money. Yeah. You know, so it's not even saying there's a money problem. That's where the money is in the world. But they don't have the horses. I mean, look at those graded stakes races. You have a three-year-old stake last weekend that had four Bob Bafferts and, and two other horses. And then Baffert scratched one or two of them. I mean, it's just, 
it's very, you know, it's, they're struggling bad at Santa Anita, and, you know, they just, people are upping and leaving. I mean, look at jockeys are leaving there. I mean, yeah. someone says the Bob Baffert effect. I mean, maybe. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> I was waiting for that one to come out. That's low blow, Joshua. That's low blow. The Bob Baffert effect. The breeding program out west is not as strong as in the east. And I agree with that, too, <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. The, 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 the money is though. The money is strong. I'm sure that people buy horses. You know? Yeah. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, so if they want to get Northern California racing, and there again, like Golden Gate, I mean, five, six horse fields in every race. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so the Stronics shut it down, or they're about to shut it down this year. You know, I mean, I just think there's too many tracks. And then I'm reading that Texas wants to add another track now. Wow. So they want to have like three or four tracks racing in the one state, for heaven's sake. So um, I don't know. I just, I just think there's too many tracks for what we have for horse population right now. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, over here, man, I mean, I can't believe how many horses with like races are overfilling, overfilling all the time we're over here. You serious? And yeah, race a lot of races were overfilling over here. So like even right. like like the like the, let's use that maiden race that's on for sure this week. How many uh, we got uh, two or three on the outsoles and stuff like that, right? So a lot of so on I, I begin to, I begin to believe then what that guy said just now about the Bob Buffer effect. You think people are just being I don't know, they don't want race or to be Bob Buffer is? I don't know. Well, it's, it's, I think it's more of a case of that he's got like, you know, you know, the horse population is so low. He's got, you know, most of the horses in each stake race, at least three year old or maiden races and all that. And, you know, I mean, that might be part of it. I mean, who wants to race in a small field when he's got four horses and you've got one? I don't know. I just, what I what sure. I can tell you is that the framing of the races is very important. You've got to be able to frame a race where everybody can get something out of it. So I don't know. I won't be afraid of Bob. I just want to go in a race that I got a shot. Yeah. <laughs> what? Probably. I was just singing, playing Bob Marley there just now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Peter, Peter Gooding says, yeah, the Belmont Stakes is running at Saratoga this year. That's because Belmont's being blown up, so. Um, yeah. Now, uh, hi, Leroy, do they have shippers running where you are at Turf Lots, at lots, lots. Eddie. The shippers, yeah. Every race day there's shippers. Every race day. But not only that, people are training over at Kingland in the in, in the training center at Kingland too. I made a training track at Kingland and coming over here. Like for instance, the guys that claimed my horse last week that win, they they from Kingland too, you know. So there's there's shippers every day here. Every day race day there are people shipping in and lots of shippers. But that yeah. that will make it even stranger then. You know what I mean? That is the top heaviness of racing in certain places and other places just People that they just don't want to be wrong as certain people. I don't know. I begin to think there's some kind of some sort of thing going on, man. Yeah, but I mean, you're you're here in, in you're in Kentucky in the midst of horse horse world here, and 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 that's not trying to change the subject on you. That's the one thing with shipping with tracks that horses are shipping in, man. As a handicapper, it's it's a big thing on you, man, because you're looking at the the, the at your at your your PPs and stuff like that, and these horses. The, the works don't look great nor nothing. Yet still these horses are running off the TV and, and at big odds and stuff like that. <laughs> you know? And it's it's amazing, man. And then, you know, like this weekend, we're going to even be more shippers because all the horses that are coming in for, for Saturday, I guarantee, like, today and, between today and tomorrow, their place is going to be packed. Mm. And isn't that interesting? Horses. So you got all these horses filling all these great races at Turfway on Saturday, and it's on Tapita, so... Yeah, you know, you've yeah. got all these people saying, oh, I, you know, Tapita is not real racing. Well, look at where the, you know, yeah. between yeah, Fairgrounds has got a good card, but, to, you know, there's Tapita at Turfway and it's got a great card. And, and it's, it's a super card. Them. 13 races. 13 yeah. races and it's a super card. You know what I mean? So, 
Yeah. But Take it's not true. And someone else made a good point here that the purse structure doesn't compare at California to like, you know, look at the purses at Oaklawn and Turfway. I mean, yeah. they're huge. Listen, yeah. listen, I thought that I thought that from ball one, but I couldn't argue because I know you follow the money. You hear me? I I couldn't argue because I'm 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 not familiar with the purse structure. That's the truth. But yeah. you follow the money. Well, of yeah. course, of course. But Santiago Gonzalez said owners and trainers with 20 to 50 year sales pockets can't compete against the best trainers with million dollar purses. So Bob Bob Buffer is making it hard for others to win major races over there. Is, is it, but is that, when you um, a horse doesn't know how much he costs when you when they all go in the gate they're all horses yeah but so, at the same thing, but so I'm not trying to cut you off Kurt, but at the same time his stat speaks for itself though yeah, yeah i mean you know his stat speaks for itself right <laughs> you know what i mean it's it's that speaks for itself so i mean that the, who want and and then we were talking again <clears throat> when uh, we were talking about you know stake races coming up and guys nominating for stake races you get uh, nominations coming out two weeks before the race so you have a, in north america you have an idea of who's going in what and you can put yourself in a position where you want to run your horse like the same horse um that's that's double enter that was supposed to run what's the horse name again jen um gate gate hmm. road right a gate road right is double enter i get road, I get, I get, yeah. I get road right road. double enter and that's the thing with stake races, Kurt. You can double enter in stake races. It's the same way where you can put one jockey on two horses in a stake race. You can decide uh -huh. where you want to where you want to go, go. If you want to scratch or not. So those those are the things that you you, you gotta understand the thing with North America. So who wants to run against in the races that you gotta pay nominations for and run last? Uh, fair enough. You know, from a business point, you got to look at it from so these owners don't want these owners are here to make money, and they ain't making. And that's them. the whole, yeah, that's the whole rule of the game, <laughs> right? Our our business is horse racing. I mean, I mean, our game is horse racing, but winning is our business, right? Right. Mm. Yeah. So you know, but and Justin said, let's talk about how we could change the industry. Is that possible, though? <laughs> Let Let's oh, talk about how we can change the industry. What What we can do is change the thinking. <laughs> It's tragedy. For instance, I was telling Jen that um, Gold Cup Day is our most prestigious day. Everybody wants to see your colors going around the, the circuit. Of However, course. I didn't see a race that suited my horse. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go in. My horse was rated 33. I didn't want to go in a, a 0 to 45. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would get lightweight, but I go in up against hard competition. So in right. my mind, you guys go and race. You guys go and race. I will look for my field because I know the very next race there, half of everybody's hurting. They <laughs> did so much to prepare for Gold Cup. They can't follow on. And the so next day, no. They're just the next day, go race. I got scanty field. <laughs> uh, I'm not scanty with horses, just scanty with competition because I look into win. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, so the whole rule, though. the whole rule is it has always been. I remember from a boy, mm -hmm. keep yourself amongst the best of company, put your horse amongst the worst. Right. You right. want to win, that's what you got to do. It Otherwise, than that, you're just wasting money. It hasn't changed, no. man. No, but I don't know. That's the topic for tonight. That says great thinking, Kurt. Edwin says great thinking, Kurt. No, it's, it's well, yeah. I've got a small barn. Let me. My my syndicate is called Hunts, Huntsman Farms. Uh -huh. I gotta produce, as as Leroy said. If I don't produce, somebody waiting to but take it over. Oh, well, that's 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 the trainer just waiting and he slips. Yeah. Same thing, same thing with a jockey. You know, I mean, a jockey gets hurt as an agent. You you got one jockey and he gets hurt. Trust me business Correct. to get your bit you know you got to hope that when you know the time that you're off or even getting three days getting three days as an, a job those three days can hurt you or make or break yeah and you don't have the calls or something like that 
you know, the one thing you, you have, you can put in an appeal and try and save your days. And for another time that when you don't look like you have, you know, that amount of calls and stuff, like you can work around it that way. You know what I mean? There's all, like I always said, there's always a solution, but you got to be careful that, you know, they, they, they decide to give you these days and you got to take them. You, your, your best horses are running. And you mm-hmm. gotta sit there. And you, you, as a thing, you're hoping that they don't win, but you, your owners, you want your owners to win races so they can stay in the game. Mm-hmm. You, you're mm-hmm. thinking so. There's so many different little angles to talk about in, in this game from a horse point of view and from a business point of view. And everybody's in this game not to lose money. And today, the owners are so much more involved than yesteryear. They're seeing so much more. They're getting everything is right. They don't have to leave home and go nowhere. Everything is mm-hmm. right there. You can watch mm-hmm. horses working in the morning. Your sister and I remember I was listening to uh, Real Players the other day, and one trainer was asked, you know, what is so different in this game? And then he says, well, a lot of trainers are training horses from off the phone. Oh, you know what I mean? Whoa. But but when you got when you got good horsemen working for you, you can afford to do that because you have so many different horses, so many different places. You can only be one place at a time. But if you got great, yeah. different trainers and good horsemen mm-hmm. working for you, you can afford to do it. But that's you know, a long time, though. Don't you think? That's what I'm saying. But you're like, sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm just saying. You know what I mean? You got good horsemen doing that. I mean, that's that's the the world today is changing. How many mm. times now you can go to a meeting, even in the in the corporate world, that you don't have to go in the office or meeting anymore. You can sit down at home and have a Zoom call meeting. So the, yeah. the, the the world is changing, and you got to change with it. If you don't change with it, then you're gonna get left behind. Yeah, left behind. So you can have 50 horses and and have your assistant training there, and you got not even um, binoculars that you can binocular the horses and videotaping them while they're working. Mm-hmm. You know that's the technology out there now. So you can't complain and say, "Oh, trainers are training from a phone and stuff like that," but they're still winning races. Their percentage is still up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Down here, you got Brandon Walsh down here. You got Greg Cox down here. Um, uh, um, you got Steve Asmussen down here. You know, you got Jonathan Thompson down here. You got Michael Maker down here. All these guys, and they got good horsemen working for them. And they win in races. So you can't complain about these things. You just get your butt in gear and get, get rolling. Do what you got to do. And do what you got to do. Now have 200 horses, and they're all scattered all over the place. Yeah, you know what I mean, so. and so, and and it never stopped them from winning races. I mean, they still win races. As you said, once you got good people, um, yeah. And, and, w- and when you got forty something state races within what three day three days of racing, how can they yeah. be at one place at the same time? All of those places at the same time, right. they yeah. got to focus on where to put their horses. They got to sit down and, and focus on that condition book. They got to focus on all those other things. They can't focus on being at the track and trying to do those things at the same time. So, you know, you got to change with the way, way it's going on. Is this like, and not and down here, you're allowed more than one job down here. Like in Canada, you only allow two journeymen and one bug. You can, certain states down here, you can have three, four jobs. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? So you got to be able to do your work and, and do it right. So there's so many things that you gotta be able to keep up the par with racing and racing today, you know. And when the condition book come out, you better be on your game and have your homework done. So hey, anyhow, we can go on and on and on, but that's no, no, uh, good good discussions there. Yeah. Yeah. So well, uh, thanks guys. I don't know if you guys are gonna stick on for another 30. No, um, good. that's good. Really good. That's good, yeah. I got a lot of handicapping and stuff to do in the next two days. So, Jen, tell me, tell me your secret for picking a maiden winner. What do you look for? Oh, I look at everything I can find. I look at pedigree, first of all. Uh, I look at pedigree right away. I want to see, um, you know... If the stallion is known for his two-year-olds or early precocious winners, I look at the mare's race record. How did she do first time out? What kind of horse was she? And her foals. I I, I, I do a lot of research on the pedigrees. Uh, if they've been through a two-year-old sale, I'll you know I'll look at that. Um, 
trainers, I'll look at that for sure. Um, if a trainer is over 38, you know, the stats are right there in the form of the program, what they what they are with first-time starters. Um, you know, I'll look at workouts. I want to see, you know, well space, you know, like regular workouts. Um, and post position and who they're running against. And I get, you know, I'll start with, you know, like, for instance, that race at Turfway. I'll start with, you know, this field of all firsters and I'll narrow it down to a few and then maybe I'll box three of them and then exactor. So, you know, like you'll have horses and the see now sometimes they get carried like, you know, there's a the first time starter that's working well, but she's in the twelve hole for Sherry DeVoe. Yeah. And it's by uh, enticed. And she's been working forty seven and change from the gate. Now there's a Chris Davis Philly. Uh, you know, in the race now, she's an Irish bred, though. So they, I don't know. No, I'm I'm in the same barn as them, and they're not really high on that horse either. Yeah. But so, again, so, you know, the gate still got to open, right, Jen? Yeah, but I mean, as far as picking out all these first-time starters, um, yeah, I like to look at uh, breeding, trainer, workouts. I'll even go as far as, you know, and there's a lot of resources out there. Like, if you like, if you have a, all these first-time starters at Gulfstream, you can go to xbtv.com uh -huh. and mm -hmm. type in any horse's name and watch workouts. That that website, all you have to do is make a free account. That website has every workout from Palm Meadows to Gulfstream, uh, all the Santa Anita workouts. And I love watching workouts, you know, just to see how a horse moves and, and what the workout kind of looked like. But so, yeah, breeding, trainer, workouts, and then. So you, you basically look at everything, Jane. I love, yeah, I study everything, you know, because I'm not a big, uh, I don't play a lot of races like 12,000 claiming races. If it's in a pick four, then yeah, I'll bet, I'll, I'll handicap that. But I like to bet, bet uh, maiden races. And stakes races, money races, Kurt. Correct, because somebody's <laughs> going to jump out that nobody knows anything about. And Jen, 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 want to got the little s on there. Money races, Kurt. Money, money races, Kurt. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping for Sabatini. Oh, what website was that, Mary? That was xb, as in Bob, TV dot com. So x btv.com i type it in the comments but if you type a website in the comments it it won't let me uh it won't let me do that for some reason so well, the information that journey gives eh you mm. see the information that you get on journey yeah you learn a lot <laughs> you're welcome mary but but our guy bigger now give us a long shot for the jeff ruby man live Who's long oh he likes wood courts, eh okay yeah. well that's an interesting horse. That's, uh, let's see here. Woodcourt is wow. the Jeff Ruby, of course. It's also the last race of the day. Wow. So Woodcourt is uh, owned by the Contreras stable of Cipriano Contreras. The horse was fourth in the Rebel <coughs> Timberlake. And he's actually uh, won his last start at Turfway when he was claimed for $50,000. Yes, he so. was. Yes, that horse was, yeah. And he's got my 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 pick. I like is northern is northern flame. What do you who you like, Jen? Uh, uh I like Otello. We Otello. like all three horses in a row there. Northern Flame, yeah, he's uh, he was third in the Rebel. Uh, yeah. I'm you know I'm I'm still wondering about you know he's a he's a pace runner, but yeah, he might like the way the track. If you're right about how the track yeah. is. He's going to yeah. be deadly. And Ken McPeak at this time of year is always yeah, deadly. He's, yeah, no, he's pretty I quite, deadly. So. Uh, I quite like Otello. I, I really loved his uh, Mucho Macho Man Stakes victory. And I wasn't too worried about uh, when he was six to Hades because they went in 50 to the half and the horse is an off-the-pace type. So, um, yeah, so there's your, exa there's your exactor box for the, Jeff Ruby. The, there's the three horses Northern right there. Northern Flame, Woodcourt, and Otello. Those are numbers. Make, of make notes, Kurt. There's your three <laughs> horses right there. <laughs> six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight with Jeff Ruby. Six, seven, and eight. And Addy, Addy, Addy's gambling, too. So who's yeah. Addy's horses? Where's Addy? Well, Addy want people to come to tote. So, I mean, I hope people don't come and break him now. 
<laughs> I don't know Come on, Andy. <laughs> well, hey, if he's gonna, if we're gonna get some people going his way off, we're giving him some tips here. Then yeah. so be. Yeah. Of course, we, we're, we're leaving out the big favorite in the Jeff Ruby, which is endlessly, who uh, just won at Golden Gate the El Camino Real Derby easily. Mm -hmm. And has yeah. only lost once in his career for Mike McCarthy, so he's going to be heavily favored in the Jeff Ruby. But who box needs a favorite? <laughs> yes, exactly. If they're not brave, get boxing for them. Come then box the four of them. Why not? Yeah. There you there go. You go. So there you go. Six, seven, race. six, seven, eight, ten. There's your race picks for the race. There. Kurt, you're you making notes, Kurt. Kurt, you're I got you. Notes. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Well, it'll be fun to go all through all these races next week. Okay. Good luck to Leroy. Right. Thank you. On Thank you. Saturday. Saturday, yeah. yeah. You guys aren't racing this weekend. You're racing next weekend. You're racing next yeah. weekend. If they have races, so we'll know. We'll, well we've yeah. got some some fields really fully subscribed and others not so subscribed. Oh. So you don't want to have a mediocre day. Hmm. Uh, it's right. a whole it's a whole question for the directors. They gotta answer that question. Okay, well keep yeah. keep the keep the, 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 the energy up so you can you guys can have some racing going on down there because I enjoy watching the races from here all the time too. So yeah, it, wow. you know what I mean I try and tune in all the time. I got I got my um notification on my thing for YouTube, so as soon as they come it pops up and I, I'm already yeah. got watch my computer and I'm yeah. watching. So yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. that's good so. to really right. Yeah. No, I do, I do. Do I like to ask Kurt? So I, I, that's why I say you the thing. I can find Kurt's yeah, number yeah, to tell Kurt. him congratulations. Yeah. I call Kurt after the race and congratulate him. So yeah, hey, hey man, hey, that, don't don't forget that little rock down there, that little circle with that bull ring did is help. That's his starting right ground. You know what I mean? So I can't leave out down at home, man. You know what I mean? And that little time at home, it was a blast. Energize for me. you. Energize you. It energized me, yeah. So I'm 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 fired up, man. I got my condition book here. I'll be doing my homework. I got my uh -huh. notebook here. So I'm doing my homework. I got my job ready to go to Florida. I booked his 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 uh, room for him yesterday. Yes, I got my and, job and don't forget most important thing, you got your can juice still in Canada. And yeah, there you go. So I'm fired up, man. I'm fired up. I need a I'm nap. <laughs> I'm fired up. You see, the, the beard is gone. I got my agent thing back on. Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I noticed that. I, I'm, I'm fired wow. up, man. I'm ready, man. I'm fired wow. up. I'm fired up, bro. Do your thing, bro. All <laughs> the best to up. you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it was the fun. And well thing. done, Kurt, yeah. on your horse winning. And we'll see yes, how what? the race takes up for your horse. Uh, hopefully, uh, he runs again next uh, in two weeks' mm -hmm. time. And yeah. John, right, keep so, up the good work, and we'll. Yeah. Uh, yep. And and hopefully we get to see Mike soon, and you know what I mean. And you guys are at yeah. Woodbine that are that are rolling, and hopefully the weather cooperates with you. You know that this weekend coming, because then every weekend everybody's looking to work their horses and try and get prepared for you know the twenty twenty fifth whenever the, the, the opening day is. You know, 27th. so twenty uh seventh. -huh. Sorry, yeah, twenty seventh. You know, so all the best, and every keep rolling, and keep these horses, keep the game going and everything and good luck to all everybody that have horses coming up on the weekend you know so again thanks again guys thanks for all the support thanks to everybody so, watching yeah, yeah and on that right. note guys we're out of here out of here yeah. <laughs> good night right. guys good night Journeys is sponsored by the Horsemen's Benevolent and Protective Association of Ontario, which represents thoroughbred owners and trainers and their hardworking employees at Woodbine and Fort Erie racetracks. The HPPA represents horse people's interests in all issues pertaining to thoroughbred racing. The HPPA's goal is for the betterment of racing at all levels, from medical and pension plans to negotiating with government and racetrack operators. 
Your HBPA is at the forefront of all issues important to members. Please visit the HBPA at hbpa.on.ca or on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thank you, HBPA Ontario. Away Together is all about enhancing the guest experience from the hotel to exploring everything the destination has to offer. Away Together brings the culture and the history of a location alive to the traveler who is seeking to immerse themselves in a truly authentic local experience while on vacation. The next race day at the Garson Savannah will be the 30th of March. Bring your family and enjoy a day of races. <laughs>